Good evening. <laughs> Welcome to St. Joe's as we celebrate this uh, delightfully moist Saturday. I invite you to please rise and sing our entrance hymn number 460 in the gray hymnal, The King of Love, My Shepherd Is, hymn 460. the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us call to mind our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Look 
look upon us, O God, creator and ruler of all things, and that we may feel the working of your mercy, grant that we may serve you with all our heart through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Let us be seated for the readings. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses, Go down at once to your people, whom you brought out of the land of Egypt, for they have become depraved. They have soon turned aside from the way I pointed out to them, making for themselves a molten calf and worshiping it, sacrificing to it and crying out, This is your God, O Israel, who brought you out of the land of Egypt. I see how stiff-necked this people is, continued the Lord to Moses. Let me alone then, that my wrath may blaze up against them to consume them. Then I will make of you a great nation. But Moses implored the Lord his God, saying, Why, O Lord, should your wrath blaze up against your own people, whom you brought out of the land of Egypt with such great power and with so strong a hand? Remember your servants, Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, and how you swore to them by your own self, saying, I will make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky, and all this land that I promised, I will give your descendants as their perpetual heritage. So the Lord relented in the punishment he had threatened to inflict on his people. The word of the Lord. I will rise and go to my Father. Have mercy on me, O God, in your goodness. In the greatness of your compassion, wipe out my offense. Thoroughly wash me from my guilt, and of my sin, cleanse me. A clean heart create for me, O God, and a steadfast spirit renew within me. Cast me not out from your presence, and your Holy Spirit take not from me. O oh Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. My sacrifice, O oh God, is, to a, is a contrite spirit. A heart contrite and humbled, O oh God, you will not spurn. Reading from the first letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Beloved, I am grateful to him who has strengthened me, Christ Jesus our Lord, because he considered me trustworthy in appointing me to the ministry. I was once a blasphemer and a persecutor and arrogant, but I have been mercifully treated because I acted out of ignorance in my unbelief. Indeed, the grace of our Lord has been abundant, along with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. This saying is trustworthy and deserves full acceptance. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Of these, I am the foremost. But for that reason, I was mercifully treated, so that in me, as the foremost, Christ Jesus might display all his patience as an example for those who would come to believe in him for everlasting life. To the King of ages, incorruptible, invisible, the only God, honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord.
be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Tax collectors and sinners were all drawing near to listen to Jesus. But the Pharisees and the scribes began to complain, saying, This man welcomes sinners and eats with them. So to them he addressed this parable. What man among you, having a hundred sheep and losing one of them, would not leave the ninety-nine in the desert and go after the lost one until he finds it? When he finds it, he sets it on his shoulders with great joy. Upon his arrival home, he calls together his friends and neighbors and says to them, Rejoice with me, because I have found my lost sheep. I tell you, in just the same way, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous people who have no need of repentance. Or what woman, having ten coins and losing one, would not light a lamp and sweep the house, searching carefully until she finds it? And when she finds it, she calls together her friends and neighbors and rejoices and says to them, Rejoice with me, because I have found the coin that I lost. In just the same way, I tell you, there will be rejoicing among the angels of God over one sinner who repents. Then he said, A man had two sons, and the younger son said to his father, Father, give me the share of your estate that should come to me. So the father divided the property between them. After a few days, the younger son collected all his belongings and set off to a distant country where he squandered his inheritance on a life of dissipation. When he had freely spent everything, a severe famine struck that country, and he himself was found in dire need. So he hired himself out to one of the local citizens, who sent him to his farm to tend the swine. He longed to eat his fill of the pods on which the swine fed, but nobody gave him any. Coming to his senses, he thought, how many of my father's hired workers have more than enough food to eat, but here am I, dying from hunger. I shall get up and go to my father, and I shall say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I no longer deserve to be called your son. Treat me as you would treat one of your hired workers. So he got up and went back to his father. While he was still a long way off, his father caught sight of him and was filled with compassion. He ran to his son, embraced him, and kissed him. His son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I no longer deserve to be called your son. But his father ordered his servants, Quickly, bring the finest robe, put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Take the fattened calf and slaughter it. Then 
let us celebrate with a feast, because this son of mine was dead and has come to life again. He was lost and has been found. Then the celebration began. Now the older son had been out in the field, and on his way back, as he neared the house, he heard the sound of music and dancing. He called one of the servants and asked what this might mean. The servant said to him, Your brother has returned, and your father has slaughtered the fattened calf because he has him back, safe and sound. He became angry. And when he refused to enter the house, his father came out, pleaded with him. He said to his father in reply, Look, all these years I served you, and not once did I disobey your orders. Yet you never gave me even a young goat to feast on with my friends. But when your son returns, who swallowed up your property with prostitutes, for him you slaughter the fattened calf. He said to him, My son, you are here with me always. Everything I have is yours. But now we must celebrate and rejoice because your brother was dead and has come to life again. He was lost and has been found. The Gospel of the Lord. Good evening. Well, folks, we have a bit of a whopper of a gospel today. My goodness, wasn't it long? But wasn't it so beautiful to be reminded of how much our Heavenly Father loves us and how he continues to seek after us, even when we're lost? You know... Sometimes when we get caught up in sin, we can feel so distant from God that we can be absolutely convinced that the Lord wants absolutely nothing to do with us. We get caught up in ourself. And when we have that eureka moment of, oh no, I've made a mistake. Sometimes we just feel like between us and God is an eternal chasm. And that can continue to have a detrimental effect on our soul. We can feel unloved, unwanted. We might even say something like, wouldn't it have better been better? if I wouldn't have been. But the thing about sin and the thing about grace is that though sin disrupts grace, the love that God wishes to share with us, I always like to think of grace like a beautiful, wonderful day like today when it's nothing but rain 
And God sends forth his grace, his reign upon the world, so as to be able to renew it. He sends it upon everyone because all that is has been created by him. All has been made in his image, has been made for tremendous love. But my dear friends, sometimes we're really good at breaking out the raincoats and the umbrellas. And when we sin, we put that barrier between us and God. It's not that God in his love has given up on us. It's not that he hasn't sent forth his grace. It's that we've decided to avoid it. you know what sometimes we don't like to get wet and when we've found our place underneath that umbrella we want to stay there but we need God's grace and that's what I love about the sacrament of reconciliation it's that opportunity to remove that barrier to re-encounter the grace of God that has always surrounded us, to feel his presence once again, to be cleansed, renewed, and made whole. Beautiful, wonderful thing. Just like the shepherd who searches for the sheep, just like the woman who goes through the house several times to find that coin, so too God in his love continues to send his grace, hoping and praying that our hearts may return to his. Beautiful image we have. And that's only the very beginning of our gospel. There was a lot more. One of the most famous parables, that of the prodigal son, that tremendous story in which we are reminded of how God loves us deeply and tremendously. And how sometimes even our best ideas need some rethinking. A man has two sons. The youngest, I imagine, feels a little bit perturbed because the oldest son is always at father's side. Well, if I'm just extra, I'm going to go, but hey, I'm not going with nothing. Dad, pa, pops, I'm thankful for everything you've done to bring me to this point, but now, let's be honest, kind of waiting on my inheritance. So we got two ways to go about it. Either give it to me now, or we're going to just have to wait for it. Dad, I'd be better off if you were dead. Can you imagine your beloved child saying those words to you? All that I value from you is your money. The father, I imagine, is devastated to hear these words. But knowing, trusting, believing, and hoping, this is my son. I've done everything I've could to make him a man that I would be proud of. 
maybe, just, just maybe, if I give him this, he'll make good, wise, holy, and healthy choices. Here you go. And of course, we know how his newfound wealth plays out. Like many, a child first time away from home gets caught up in the worlds of wine, women, and song, and before you know it, his great assets are long gone. We know he's far from home. He's left the promised land. Swine are present, the dirty, unclean animal kosher for him no seen in the Jewish world to be filthy and what is his job to take care of them kind of the lowest of the low but it's all that he can get it's all that he can do and so that tremendous reality opens in his heart a path to the love of the Father. Knowing how kind and generous and fair his Father is, how he always treated his staff with love and affection and gave them a fair deal, honest pay, for honest work. None of these get-rich-quick schemes. But through the labor of our back, through the sweat of our brow, we make our way forward. And so he comes home. You know, our gospel could have ended there. And it would have been a beautiful, complete story. Foolishness followed by remorse and returning home, repentant and sorrowful. But oh no, Jesus has more to teach us. The father who was betrayed by the son who was told that he was better off if he would have been dead sees his boy in the distance. I imagine those wounds are still fresh. His heart is still hurt. And it would have been very easy for him to turn a cold shoulder I'm better off dead. I don't see you. Who are you talking to? Who are you going home to? But as we know, the gift and the joy of unconditional love the father sees the son. And yes, there has been wounds. Yes, there have been hurts. Yes, there's been words and actions and every reason under the sun to, stay, to say, stop, stay away. The father not only makes his presence known, but he does what is undignified in the culture. He runs to his son. In this period of Jewish life, uh, uh, running is for kids and for servants. A father doesn't run to his kids. The kids run to daddy. The lesser runs quickly to the greater. But the Father's love cannot be contained. 
He runs out, he rejoices, he forgives, he loves, and he wants the world to know. Put a ring on his finger, new sandals on his feet, <laughs> a cloak that is worthy and dignified, and let the neighbors know, slaughter the fattened calf. This is a day for us to rejoice and to celebrate because he who was dead... He who we thought we lost, who, he who we thought we would never see again, has come home. That's almost good enough to make a Hallmark movie. Or at least on Lifetime. And the story could end here. And we would still need a little box of Kleenexes for it. The son came back. The father forgave. Ha! Ah, warm and fuzzies galore. But that Jesus, he's always trying to teach us something. The story goes on. We see a character we thought was just a minor one come back. The older son. The eldest. You know, the responsible one. The one who always did what he should, the goody two shoes. And he's angry. And perhaps rightfully so. I would be very happy if his anger would have been because how the, his little brother hurt his dad. How could you do that to dad? This man who created you, who has loved you, who has given you everything you could have possibly wanted, and that's what you do? No. That older son is all about himself. He whines, he complains, he doesn't even acknowledge that it's his brother. Your son swallowed up half of your property, which should have been my property, with whores and prostitutes. What kind of a P.O.S. is this guy? And you're throwing a party? I'm the one who does all the work. Nobody throws me apart. I can't even get a stinking goat. Sure, yeah, yeah, let's just sell off more land. Give them even more, yeah. It'll be great. His anger is real. It's tangible. It's almost leaping off of the page at us. This is one unhappy character. And I think this is the greatest lesson of everything. Yes, God loves us, and yes, God is seeking us out, and yes, if we make mistakes, we can always go back to God because God has never left us. He's looking, and if he sees us in the distance, he's running to us. He wants to be with us, restore relationships, bring healing and celebration, and he wants the world to know who we are as his children. But how many of us are so caught up in our own selves and about what I don't get and what that guy has and what I want and I want and I want and I want that we forget about all of the love that surrounds us. We let
let this anger and this nastiness take hold of our heart, and we can't even see our own family. We just despise each other, and we let this filth and this hate grow and grow, and we reduce people to be one political ideology or one little thought or one little aspect of their life, and we come up with all of these reasons as to why we don't like them and why we hate them and why we would never love them and why they're all going to hell and why I'm so awesome. But today, Jesus, Jesus reminds us it's not about us. It's not about who we are in ourselves, but who we are in relationship to each other. You are loved tremendously by God. And whether we've been a saint all of our life or whether we've gone through our own rough patches, our own little wanderings off into the desert, our own little time in distant lands filled with wine, women, and song, if we have the courage to come back to God, we shall be loved because that grace has always surrounded us God's presence has always been with us just sometimes we're so caught up in ourselves that all we do is look inward and we wonder why everything is so dark but if we can look up and see the light and the love of God. That is a beautiful day, a wonderful gift, a tremendous blessing. And so, my dear friends, my question to you as we Enjoy the rain, God's grace pouring upon our hearts. Is will we be open to the love that God wants to share? Or are we going to be too caught up in our own business? May our hearts be open. May we love. And may God. Bless you always. Rising in faith, we stand before our Lord of love as we bring forth our petitions. But first, we proclaim what we believe. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, who was crucified under Pontius Pilate, suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, 
who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Thankful for the many gifts and blessings that God has shared with us, but mindful of that call to openness of heart, let us pray not only for ourselves, but for all people that our hearts may be open to God. For the church, her leaders, and all the faithful, that they may be blessed with wisdom and devotion, we pray to the Lord. that those who hold public office will imitate the goodness of God, we pray to the Lord. For God's blessing on all who serve our country in the military and public safety, we pray to the Lord. For special blessings on husbands and wives, that their marriages will witness to the goodness of the gospel and bless their families. We pray to the Lord that the dignity of human life will be protected in our laws. We pray to the Lord that our parish may grow in faith, hope, and love. We pray to the Lord for the grace this week to be repentant and open to the mercy of Christ. We pray to the Lord. For the intentions inscribed in our book of prayer, in our prayer baskets, and those we lift to Jesus in the quiet of our heart. We pray to the Lord for all of our beloved dead, especially Loretta Fisher and Larry Rosenthal. We pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, We, your beloved children, lift these prayers up to you through Christ our Lord.
my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Look with favor on our supplications, O Lord, and in your kindness accept these, your servants' offerings, that what each has offered to the honor of your name may serve the salvation of all through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being, and while in this body we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration, we acclaim. <laughs> of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. 
Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and William, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold, the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. 
Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
of this heavenly gift, O Lord, we pray, take possession of our minds and bodies so that its effects and not our own desires may always prevail in us through Christ our Lord. Amen. Have a beautiful and a blessed night, everybody. A, a friendly reminder that a panacea is still going on uh, this weekend. Um, Hopefully the showers will stop at some point, but uh, if you haven't made it there yet, be sure to enjoy all of the fun over at Pacelli. And don't forget there are some money-saving coupons in the bulletin because I know you all want to ride the zipper and the uh, tilt-a-whirl. So uh, have fun, enjoy that. Um, secondly, um, in the bulletin these past few weeks, we've had all sorts of announcements about Alpha, which is uh, kind of a strange word, but uh, Alpha, the Greek letter A, uh, the beginnings, it's about uh, having a conversation uh, about the Lord and his love, and it's about people coming together, sharing a meal, um, listening to a brief presentation, and sharing their, their thoughts and feelings about that. We'll be... Uh, beginning a, 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 a couple-month alpha track with our brothers and sisters over at St. Bronze. We'll be meeting on Monday nights over at St. Bronze. I'll be a part of it, too, and it should be a, a nice time for us to grow a little bit uh, uh, deeper in our faith by pondering some thoughts and talking with one another, and there's food, so... All sorts of good things. If you're interested in Alpha, want to dip your big toe in the water, this is my first time officially going through a, an Alpha program too. That's why we're over at Bronze to kind of see how it's done sort of a thing. Uh, please uh, do let us know that you're coming. Uh, sign up in the office and we would love to have you. It should be a, a, a wonderful uh, experience over these uh, upcoming weeks that we'll be starting the tail end of this month. More information in the bulletin, and oh, I can hear Dale Tetzloff in the choir loft crying because we're over time, so I'm going to stop. I presume it's Dale anyways, but that's the choir director's husband, so I'm teasing Dale. You know I love you. Uh, have a beautiful and a blessed Sunday, and uh, let's live a little bit less about me and a little bit more about embracing our Heavenly Father's tremendous love as he continues to, to search us out. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Go in peace.